See that baby? See the cane? The crazy thing about this picture isn't what you can see, it's what you can't. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In my first video, I went from foot surgery to amputation in 82 seconds. Everything I skimmed over is the juicy part. Let's sink our teeth into it, beginning with a little reenactment. The reason why you sprained your ankle is because two bones are fused. You need surgery. It'll be about three months of non-weight bearing, and by six months you will be running again. Wait. That seems kind of drastic. I mean, I'm really active and I'm not in pain. Like, do we really need surgery? If you don't correct the bones with surgery, you'll have crippling arthritis when you're older. Yeah, I don't want arthritis, but couldn't we try something less invasive, like arch supports or something? The bones are fused. Nothing other than surgery can change that. My patients who've had this same procedure have all been thrilled with the outcome. What percentage of them would do it again? 85% of them were so enthusiastic that they would do it again in a heartbeat. The remaining patients were pleased, just not as enthusiastically so. How risky is it? Aside from the inherent risk involved with anesthesia, there isn't much risk. This will make everything better. When a doctor brags about a 100% satisfaction rating and downplays the risk, it's a major red flag. But I didn't see it. Hindsight is always clearer after you've been burned. I'm sure you'll be very pleased with the result. When I'm finished, you'll have an entirely new foot. Got that right. <laughs> All right, let's do it two more times. Okay. In the days leading to surgery, I felt increasingly uneasy, but dismissed it as nerves. I've never had the same feeling with any of the many other surgeries I've had since. Not even amputation. Maybe I should have listened to that feeling. So I break apart the coalition. Then correct your arch by adding a bone graft. Any last questions before surgery? No, I think... Wait, actually, yes, there's one I keep forgetting to ask you. So I've got this weird pinky toe. It's always been super uncomfortable my whole life. It feels awful when it's next to my fourth toe. So I'm always spreading it apart. But that makes me really self-conscious. Do you have any idea what that could be? Hmm. Well, I'm in the OR anyway. I can sever the tendon so you can just spread your toe anymore. No. No, I mean, if, if you sever the tendon, I can spread my toe. How would I ever get comfortable? Are you sure? It's not yes. for trouble. Not, I'm sure. Don't sever my tendon. It, it wouldn't take me long if you're sure. I'm sure. Don't touch my toe. I almost walked out. Even as I was wheeled back for surgery, I didn't completely trust the doctor not to sever the tendon. Why didn't I leave? We're conditioned from childhood to do what doctors say. We also hesitate to do anything that causes others to lose face. Hauling off the surgery at the last moment, leaving behind an empty chair, would have been super uncomfortable. Instead, the rest of my life will be even more uncomfortable without my leg. If I'd walked out then, I'd still be walking now. I felt uncharacteristically anxious as the anesthesia took effect and my world went black. I woke up in excruciating pain. A month before, I'd had a baby with Pitocin and no epidural or painkillers. This pain was comparable. I remember describing it as my bones having been run over by a bus, my muscles having been chopped up and tossed into stew, and my nerves being on fire. I felt everything in exquisite detail, even the stitches. How are you feeling? The stitches on my calf really hurt. Why do I even have stitches on my leg? You don't have stitches on your leg. It was a foot surgery. That's why I'm confused. You must be having some sort of phantom pain. I don't see anything on your chart about doing a procedure on your leg. I must be imagining it. I wasn't. At the post-op appointment, when the doctor removed the surgical splint, there was a line of stitches on my calf. Hey, what's that? You didn't tell me you were doing anything to my leg. It's standard to lengthen the gastroc muscle with this procedure to accommodate the new bone position. Standard or not, I feel like you should have told me. When will that lump go away? It won't. It's a normal effective procedure. I thought for a moment, trying to word my next question as politely as possible. I'm surprised by the level of pain. Me 
patients always underestimate how much foot surgery hurts. It hurts more than knee or hip replacements. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yes. There are a lot of interconnected bones and many nerves. The foot's a sensitive area. I left, puzzling over why, if foot surgery was always this painful, no one ever talked about it. But the doctor had dismissed my pain as normal, so I dismissed it as well. The pain may have been dismissed, but the damage was less easily ignored. I was in so much pain that the footsteps of someone walking across the room or shutting a door caused the nerves to blaze. My bones couldn't bear for my foot to lean ever so slightly to the left or to the right. I tried not to shift my body, staying as immobile as possible while caring for a growing baby. In too much pain to leave my room to go downstairs for food, I began losing weight. Unable to carry my baby to his room, I had diaper supplies and a bassinet brought in. He was a good sleeper, but I wasn't. It was five weeks before the pain lessened enough for me to do more than dose. In too much pain to sleep, I held my sleeping baby close during the long, dark nights. None of my subsequent foot surgeries by other doctors had anywhere near this level of pain. After my cast was removed, I began physical therapy. As weeks of therapy turned into months, my recovery ground to a literal halt. My therapist began wondering whether something was wrong. They sent messages to the doctor relating their concerns and suggesting that something like a CT scan might be warranted. The doctor never ordered one. With each checkup, I reported unrelenting pain. Why do I still hurt so much? Sometimes tendons adhere to the bone after surgery. That could be causing your pain. I'll give you an injection to take care of that. If this is the bone, and this is a tendon that stuck to it, the idea was that by inserting a syringe, fluid would inflate this in-between space, causing the tendon to be torn off the bone. Sounds lovely. I'm not needle-phobic. I can handle this. <clears throat> My hands kept shaking for hours after this injection. Months later, two specialists told me separately that this injection was dangerous and that if anyone ever tried to do a similar injection without ultrasound guiding the needle, I should leave immediately. Otherwise, I could end up with a ruptured tendon. Foreshadowing. The six-month mark came and went when I should have been running. Instead, I was hobbling with a cane. I don't understand. I thought I'd be better by this point. Instead, I'm still struggling. I remember the ensuing conversation verbatim. Some patients have different pain tolerances than others. I want you to resume all your normal activities. You do remember that my normal activities include Taekwondo, right? I know. Go kick things. Go kick things? Go kick things. Push through the pain. Okay. I followed his instructions to the letter listening to the doctor better than I listened to the protests of my own body. We all have our own style of stupid, and this was mine. My left foot didn't want to bear my weight, so I stood on my good foot and kicked with my bad foot, whacking it again and again against that punching bag, believing it would somehow help me heal, even though pain flared with each and every kick. Maybe the fact that I needed a cane should have been my clue that I was making a mistake. Click the like button or leave a comment if you agree that baby has an incredible form. You'll be shocked to learn that my foot didn't improve. I could tell that the doctor was increasingly at his wit's end. In an ironic twist, he decided all I needed were arch supports. I still remember the day I went to pick them up. They should do the trick. If you still have pain in here, let me know. With that, he turned and walked away. No time for questions, no follow-up scheduled, nothing. I let down at my foot and came, feeling utterly abandoned. He'd dropped me. So I found a new doctor, something I should have done long ago. This new doctor immediately ordered a CT scan. The original surgeon had cut a bone apart and inserted a graft sandwiched between my existing bone and screwed in tight. The graft was supposed to fuse into one piece with the other bone, 
only it hadn't. The CT scan showed that the bone graft hadn't incorporated. Instead of one solid bone, my foot had a corroded cadaver bone jiggling around. So I guess I should stop kicking things? What do you mean you've been kicking things? Didn't it hurt? Um, yes, the doctor told me that I should. Stop kicking things. I'll spare you the play-by-play -play account of how my new doctor was the polar opposite of my first surgeon, or how he assembled a team of specialists that did everything possible to mitigate the damage. But I will tell you it's a lot easier to break things than it is to fix them. The damage to my foot was more extensive than an unincorporated bone graft. Multiple surgeons told me they felt their original surgery had been done wrong and was to blame. Even after I lost the ability to walk, my bones were breaking from the inside out. A joint had disintegrated and others were showing warning signs. A tendon had ruptured, the circulation was decreasing, the muscles of my leg had degenerated beyond hope of rehabilitating them, and a devastating nerve condition called complex regional pain syndrome had been diagnosed. Paradoxically, I even developed arthritis, the very condition the first surgeon had said he was preventing. So what's wrong with this picture? It isn't just that I'm kicking with a foot doomed to amputation, or that I was doing it on doctor's orders. It's that I didn't listen to my own body and gut instincts. My story isn't medical or legal advice, but I hope it helps you recognize red flags I was too naive to see. This is only one chapter of my story. To hear the major plot twist that happens next, subscribe and click the bell. I'm Stephanina. Thank you for joining me on my amputee adventures.